we are trying to understand the theory of business and one of the major objectives of businesses is to maximize total profits and total profits is a difference between total revenue and total cost and when the firm tries to or a business tries to maximize total profits it tries to either maximize total revenue or minimize total cost or try both of them at the same time now in this video what we'll examine is the total cost perspective and how can a firm or a business minimize total cost and as a first step we'll look at the production function what we have what we have learned from the previous video is that total cost depends upon total output produced and total output produced depends on how much labor and capital a firm uses and what we have been doing is we have been keeping life simple for ourselves so we assume that a firm needs two inputs to produce output and it produces one type of output one of the inputs is labor which is denoted as l and all other non labor inputs we call them capital or k and it could be land it could be machines it could be raw materials anything and so the firm requires two inputs to produce one type of output and the quantity of output produced is q now a production function is a physical relationship between output and inputs and inputs we know are labor and capital and labor being denoted by l and k represents all non labor inputs when we use the term physical what we have in mind is non financial relationship how many machines how many workers we require say to produce 100 shirts and things of that nature <clears throat> and this production function can be represented in a compact fashion like this where q is a function which is denoted by f of labor and capital now this small f is given to us by engineers or an technologists they will tell us how many machines and what type of machines we need and how many workers we need to produce say certain quantity of shirts or something like that so this is what a production function is and the specific amounts of labor and capital required to produce a given level of output is given by technologist or or engineers for example a production function could be given to us as 5k plus 10l a specific form of production function and and what this is telling us is the following suppose k equals l equals 1 how much output will be produced by the firm it will be 15 when we use two units of labor and two units of capital how much output will be produced by the firm it will be 30 so in this way this is a very simple example of what a production function may look like and this information will be given to us by engineers or and technology before we examine production function in greater detail let us distinguish between what we mean by short run and what we mean by long run now in economics we distinguish this not in terms of months years or days it is simply a time period in which inputs can change or cannot change in the short run we assume that at least one input is treated as fixed and the other one can be variable so and since we are looking at two input case 
we will assume labor is the variable input and we'll do this all along input and capital which is non-labor input is the fixed input so what is short run is just a time period in which in terms of decision making the firms treat capital as a fixed input and they can change quantity of labor as compared to that by long run we mean a time period in which all inputs are variable or all inputs can change so both labor and capital will be treated as variable inputs now the best way to understand this is to look at a real world example suppose you are looking at a business called pizza hut located in your town and on a weekly basis what the manager does or the owner does is decides how many workers to hire and when but then it treats the building the machines like ovens furniture and all that as given so they'll not try to change that part the only thing they can vary is the number of workers so they are making short run decisions when the management of pizza hut decides not just to vary the number of workers but could also change the location of the business outfit or could also change the way the bu the building looks they may change the furniture or they may change ovens so when they are making decisions like that we consider this to be a long run phenomena so once again in the short run we treat at least one input as fixed and in the long run we treat all variables all inputs as variable now consider the following example of a production function in the short run the exact form of the production function is given by engineers or in technologists and since we are looking at uh, the short run phenomena labor is the variable input which can change capital which represents non labor input is fixed so here what you find in terms of this table we are treating capital as fixed so this amount doesn't change there's one unit of capital all along <clears throat> and the best way to visualize this kind of a table is consider a small farmer who has a plot of land and so the plot of land is fixed in terms of size how much wheat it grows depends on now how many workers the farmer employs now when the farmer employs no workers nothing is produced on that plot of land when the farmer employs one worker how much output is produced on that plot of land it is 5 units when the farmer employs two workers instead of one the total output produced on that plot of land is 12 and in this way this table is completed so what this table gives us is how much output is produced when we use different amounts of labor on the same plot of land and in the next slide what we do is simply plot these points so here is chart 1 where we have total output on the vertical axis and units of labor on the horizontal axis and we plot the points that are contained in table 1 and what and we join them so what we get is a curve and this curve gives us the relationship between total output and labor and so for obvious reasons this curve is called total output or total product curve and it's very easy to read this when the firm or the farmer employs no workers no output is produced when the farmer employs one worker five units of output is produced when the farmer employs two workers 12 units of output is produced and this is how we would read the points 
on the total output curve. And what you find is, as we increase the number of workers, the total output goes on increasing till the seventh worker. And then the contribution of the eighth worker, when we hire eight workers, the total output produced falls from 42 to 40. Why does this happen? Think about it, and we'll get back to this point later. Look at another thing. So this curve contains information about total output produced when we vary number of workers. Now, based of this chart, we can also figure out how much output is produced by the first worker, and that is, let me write this down, first worker, it is five units of output. How much output is produced by the second worker? So we, let's write this, second worker. And how much output is produced by the second worker? It is seven. And in similar way, we can find out how much output is produced by the third worker. That'll be nine. How much output is produced by the first, fourth worker? And so on. Another thing we can do on this chart is look at the following. When we, the farmer hires one worker, what is the average output produced per worker? It is five units. When the farmer hires two workers, what is the average output produced per worker? The total output produced is 12, and there are two workers. So the average output produced per worker is six. When the farmer employs three workers, the total output produced by three workers is 21. And so what is the average output produced per worker? When the farmer uses three workers, it is seven units. We'll get to these concepts of how much output is produced by the first, second, or third worker, or how much is the average output produced per worker when the farmer employs one, two, three, or so on workers. And that is something we'll look at in the next slide. Thank you for your time.